Okay, it's been a while since, since I've done a video, um, but I thought I'll, this one's really important. Um, I got asked a whole heap of questions uh, just this week gone, um, where the Swiss cyclist um, during a race in, uh, in France, I believe last weekend, a Sunday, he was coming to the finish and his steerer tube failed on his Bianchi bike um, in the sprint finish. And he crossed the line with basically his handlebars separated from his fork and um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. I'll, th I'll throw a link into the, some of the pictures or I'll try and put a picture in. Um, you know, there's plenty of video on, uh, on YouTube um, about the incident as well. But so I thought that's a really timely, um, timely situation to highlight some of the problems that I find with forks. Um, you know, I find lots of voids um, and areas of porosity in steerer tubes and um, it's, it sort of baffles me a little bit because it's effectively a straight round tube which should be a relatively simple part to make. People have been making carbon forks for a very long time. The first sort of carbon forks um, yeah, I mean, it's been, it have to be close to 20 years, I'd say, um, for, you know, carbon steerers in, uh, in, in forks. So, um, what I thought I'll do is I've, I've got a sample of forks here and um, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you through those. I've also taken some, some really close up photos of some of the things I'm talking about and, um, yes, yeah, so I've cut cut up the forks and, and I'll go through some of that stuff as well with some images. Um, so they, yeah, real close ups. But um, we'll start with a, with a Bianchi, just because that's what sort of got the whole thing started. Um, and you know, you can see there's some damage right to the steerer there where it's actually been, um, it looks like there's sort of a, a bit of a wrinkle and there's certainly some buckling going on. And there's also a split at the back and um, where the stem has been over tightened. So um, it also has quite a bit of wear from the uh, compression ring, sort of, which is um, the term, I mean, you can sort of say ring barked, which is sort of a, a, um, an arborist's term, but it's sort of quite applicable to, to these sorts of products as well, um, because it can kill you like it can kill a tree. Um, yeah, so there's obviously something going on um, in that this fork was taken off the road. The next one, um, yeah, this is a specialised tarmac fork. Um, and when I scanned it, I found a whole bunch of areas, um, Rouse Yellow Pencil, um, in, in the steerer. And um, again, I'll show you close-ups of, of this uh, and, uh, and you can, you'll be able to see the, uh, the voids and the porosity in that one there. And, uh, and you can, you'll be able to see the, uh, the voids and the porosity in that one there. So this is down near the crown area of the fork and uh, not a good place to have porosity and voids. And so you can clearly avoid um, and there's much so you basically got that longer, longer one there and then smaller ones, but that whole area is full of porosity as on scan. So uh, it's the sort of thing we'll never find. It. It only, you can only sort of find it with a scan. This is a bit further up the steerer, so the bearing would sit. And uh, again, there's another area of porosity and, and linear that region there. So that's the sort of thing which um, can lead to the failure that, that the Yankee fork had. Um, this is a BH. Um, this one's really interesting in that the f the uh, it's failed, and you can see you can see a crack um, right through the thickness of the steerer for over fifty percent of the circumference. So um, yeah, it's also got a split at the back from being over tightened. But um, yeah, the customer brought this in, uh, it, was on the, it was fitted on the bike and he'd been riding it and uh, 
I brought him for a frame and fork inspection and uh, yeah, he's not riding that ever again. Um, yeah, this one's a, a giant a giant TCR. Um, again, some real anomalies in the scan showed up as in marked in, in yellow. And then, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Um, oh yeah, I'll throw some close-ups into that. So quite a bit of stuff going on there with a, like a big, um, some fiber, uh, fiber movement and voids, etc. Here you can see what I was talking about. The, uh, there's been some compaction variation there, and you've got that sort of near the surface, but it's more con of a concern. The whole section is full of porosity. Um, then you've got a wrinkle and some resin pooling and some fiber breakage as well. So, yeah, not ideal. Um, here's a, an old Apollo, Apollo one. It's um, they call it wrinkle-free molding technology um, but it's got a big void in it so it might be wrinkle-free but it's got a void in it um, which is less than ideal also um, so that's quite a big void here again you can see uh, the void it's at multi depth so it's uh, really getting a uh, lack of action in that area and uh, yeah again that was found uh, found with this so um, no I to tell that uh, for visual inspection um, it also has a it's, a, it's been crushed from over tightening there as well. Um, BMC, again, um, you can see yellow pencil there, there's quite a big void in the steerer running through there, if you can, you can see that. Yeah, I'll throw a close up in. Yeah, again, you can see the voids and the porosity. Uh, it's much through the thickness there. There's the main one on the surface and it says porosity. There's also sort of quite a big step there in, uh, and it's got some uh, fibre in there as well. So, um, yeah. Um, and uh, a canyon. And, uh, you know, these are some, uh, some voids that I found there. Um, which I'm not sure how they got through their X-ray system, but um, they didn't get through my ultrasound system. Um, yeah, so that's uh, like that's just just a you know, handful of forks. I've got a, a box of probably over 200 forks which I've pulled from service um, due to these sorts of problems. So this is um, just a sample that I've happened to have up up here in the workshop as as, as displays. Um, the steerer is a critical part of the bike. As you can see in that video uh, from the race, when the steerer fails and, you, and your handlebars separate from the bike, you lose the ability to control the bike. So you can't even brake, you can't steer. Um, you go wherever the bike decides to take you. You've got no control over that anymore. So it's an absolute uh, safety critical uh, item on the bike. So. The common, uh, common uh, things that uh, occur to steerers is, uh, and, and you saw it on a lot of these, that the stem gets over tightened. Um, now that can happen for a number of reasons. If, uh, A, if you're not using a torque wrench. But uh, I've gone through this plenty of times before, having the right um, compression plug makes a big difference as well because it supports those, those crushing loads in uh, in that area having voids and porosity um, in the area significantly reduces the strength so um, so porosity the typical sort of um, numbers used is anything greater than about two percent porosity and you can have um, greater than a 20 percent reduction in the compressive strength so having having voids and porosity in the area, particularly where where you're clamping or where the the uh, the bearing compression ring sits, is going to significantly weaken the part. Now that is that's not going to be visible on the surface. So the only way to find and 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 measure that uh, that porosity is is with a scan. So it's um, 
you know, that, that's, that's why it's so critical to, um, to understand the, uh, the nature of these materials. And, you know, they, they, they will fail at a much reduced load if they have porosity in them. So that's, that's sort of the take home message. So that's why it's so important to, to check these areas for porosity. And as you can see, we found plenty of stuff uh, plenty of times. So it's, um, yeah, it's an everyday sort of a, a, a occurrence. So on that note, um, I'll wind that up. I've been talking for too long and I've got, um, I've got, still got to put all those close-ups in as well um, and try and get home tonight. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. I hope you learned something. Um, don't be blasé about this. This is serious. You, you can, uh, if your fork fails, you can die. So, you know, I've been um, currently working on uh, a couple of cases, legal cases, um, where people have been severely injured, um, and, and and one person has, has, has deceased from the accident. So, um, if a fork fails. Usually the next thing to hit the ground is your head and then the resultant head injuries, um, brain trauma, etc., cetera, um, can leave you permanently disabled or dead. So it's not something to be taken lightly. It is a serious concern. So hope you ride safe. I hope I haven't scared you off, uh, off riding your bike. Um, you know, people, you know, people will say, oh, I see your videos and carbon it doesn't look like a good material for, for bikes. Carbon's a great material for a bike if it's void free and floor free and designed properly. It's, it's the best material for a bike. However, these quality aspects need to be maintained and understood and, and checked. And uh, sending, sending parts out the door that haven't been fully validated is, uh, is risky business.